Welcome to Car and Classic and welcome to something new that we're trying out. We are, as you know, a place where you can buy and sell and engage with and be enthused for and be motivated by classic cars, specialist cars and unique cars. And part of that over the last couple of years has been that we auction cars. Now, we could have got someone from Top Gear to come and drive some cars, but we didn't. Instead, we got this chap. Richard Brunning, and if you don't know who Richard Brunning is, you've been living under a rock. Richard Brunning is 50% of Project Binky on YouTube, and you, like me, like an old car. Oh, do I ever, do I ever. So what we're gonna do is, rather than do that typical thing that some auction sites do of, look at this car, buy this car, bid on this car, and put urgency on you, we're instead gonna look at some cars that we've sold in the last month, I've picked five, Richard's picked five, and uh, see what they went for, but also, just explore the sort of variation of what, what we sell at Car and Classic. And well, we've picked them because we like them as well, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have really. So we'll start off with, um, do you want to go first or shall I go first? Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to go first. I've made a few notes on-, on, on but It's on, very on professional, one. very professional. <clears throat> well, it's come prepared. Uh, well, the brief was to pick five uh, cars that, um, that I just want to talk about. Um, there was no, <laughs> no rhyme or reason about it. No. So the first one I went for was um, with this 1938 Opel Cadet. When the first cadet, mm. the, you know, pre the Chevette, and, and it was an, a proper uh, German thing, unibody construction, very, very early thing for that. Only 23 horse, but look at it. It's 23 a beautiful, horse. Yeah, 23 Power. horse, side valve engine, to, uh, was, was it 1074cc or something? It was the a, slow and the curious. Oh man, can you believe it? But I mean, what a lovely little thing. Uh, suicide doors in the back, pre-war car for the, in this condition. I think they've done a pretty good job with it. And it, and it went for, I think it was something. Four thousand eight hundred pounds or something. That's that first a car of that vintage. That's a bargain. Well, I, I, I just like the way it was finished. It's it's an honest car. It's um it's a really nice way into classic car ownership. Pre-war. It doesn't really look pre-war, and I bet it probably drives fairly well. Yeah, the, the unibody bit will make that mm. far more approachable than your typical uh, think so. ladder with some cart springs on it. I would think so. I mean, okay. If it was me, I would have probably not put that water gauge where it is, and it's a bit more than four, four litres. But I'd have done something different with that. But that's the beauty of it. You can buy it, and then you can change it. Yeah, take it off, and chuck it in a bin, and do something else. But yeah, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely thing. And, I... and it's got a bit of life to it as well, so it's not old, and you don't look at that, put it in your garage, and go, oh, it's too fragile. It's, it's, it's too perfect and pretty. It's, it's... I, I, I agree, and I think you could use it. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you want to daily it, but, I, I, but you could absolutely whack the family in, and... and uh, and, and go off to a, to, a, to a festival or something like that with it because there's plenty of room. It's not a, it's not a small thing, it's not a, not a mini. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to, you've got to get out there and use them. I mean, the, 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 the boss here at Karen Classic, as we've covered in a past video, which I'll link up there, I think it's that side, is, um, is the owner of a 1925 Bentley three litre, four and a half. Yeah. Um, and we took that to Brooklands and he, he drives the knackers off that. Oh, yeah, yeah. To the Why point not? where he's even put Isofix in it. Really? He, he oh, genu fun. genuinely, hand on heart, has put Isofix in it since that video. And he baby can put the, put the two baby seats yeah. in and the, and the kids go out. He's, he's over in Italy. And it's out, he's on Instagram. Yeah. And it's out every weekend being used as a car. You've got to keep them going. You can't just, you can't be scared of something because it's old and, and perceived as fragile. It's a machine. It is a machine. And, and that sort of value, I, I, I think you can, you can comfortably you don't you don't have to wrap it in kid gloves and put it in a carcoon and no. you just get on and use it i mean this sort of thing was um when i was a kid i i, I grew up my dad doing um commercial vehicle old com uh, restoring vintage commercial vehicles so uh, 1930s heavy engineering yeah 1936 yeah. leyland badger we had a 1923 Ford, uh, ford model t bus and and all that sort of stuff and so that really appeals to me as, as that sort of pre-war thing i loved it that's a cool thing well my my first choice isn't quite as uh, isn't quite as old as that but it is it, it's got some age to it. I went for a 1959 Ford Pop. Well, <laughs> the, uh, the blue one. Oh, it's, that's a fab thing. Well, that, that spoke to me because for, for people who don't know, my, my journalistic career, if you can call it that, back when this was all fields, when I was thin and when my hair was one colour, started at Retro Ford magazine. Well, I actually started at Classic Ford magazine. I did freelance for them. And one of the first cars I ever shot was a Ford Pop that mm -hmm. was... Uh, lowered. He'd somehow managed to wedge a 2.8 Cologne into it. Um, it was it, it was a bit too much engine for it, but it was. I, I just love that shape. I love that mm. that sort of almost jelly mould mm -hmm. that sits well over the wheels. Yep. I love that very much. And this one that we had is it's finished in this gorgeous sort of baby blue. It's on the deep dish like banded white, white steels thing. with the dog dish hubcaps. Yeah. It's lowered. The interior is custom. 
what I love about it is they haven't gone mad with the engine. But it's such a lovely build. It's, it's not too much, is it? No. It's 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 the right amount of of, of custom for yeah. it. It looks right. I yeah. think they've done a lovely job with it. There's there's somewhere they put. And I, I, I know it's it's modifying and it's all subjective and it's it's your car and you do what you want with it. But some of them, they, you know, it's the wheels are a bit, you know, wickety whack or whatever it is the kids do. I'm not, I'm not down with the kids. I've yeah. never been down with the kids. No, I wasn't down with the kids when I was a kid. Exactly. Um, but, you know, or, or they'll, they'll go down that stereotypical route of putting some Recaros in it, and it doesn't work. You've got to have that custom interior. You've got to have the right... It looks like something somebody would have modified like that in 1964. As a, as a hot rod? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love it for that. It's a, it's a beautiful I can't thing. fault you on that. I think that's a really nice piece. It went really for around nice. 10 grand. Again, not too bad in today's market i think that's pretty good value yeah for an old ford when yeah. you consider what people are, are doing when when they see an escort or a 1600d or a capri oh, okay. and i i've had five capris i love capris but all of my capris were sub 500 pounds mm. and that's including a 76 three liter s and we're talking 10 years ago they've just gone i bet you wish you still had that yeah don't, i had to fight to sell that with an mlt with a full <laughs> custom roll cage Running driving car, I had to fight to get a grand for it. Jeez. And I, I only had to sell it because stupid me knocked up the missus. Oh, what? I love my child. I really do. <laughs> yeah, but really. I child, missed the Capri, though. Yeah, Capri. I'd have got bored anyway, I'd have sold it, so it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> that's, so a, that's a nice one, though. I sold the Capri and then I bought her over the test, so I mean, what a deal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not quite entirely sure how you manage that, but no. uh, didn't you buy another one as well? Yeah, that was, that was my first one. So, the f so it's like a drug? Uh, so the a, silver one was a gateway drug to the green one. Yeah, and it's it's not even it's not even a top tier, you know, largely uncut drug. I was I was <laughs> that 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 first roll of the test was was backstreet. This is this is bleach and talcum powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Drug. It yeah. was awful. I had it for seven months. It worked for seven days. That's pretty good for a road, isn't it? Probably the most it's ever worked. It was what it was. You know, it's you know you're under a bad sign when you buy it from a dealer in Sheffield. And you drive home and it starts overheating on the M62 mm -hmm. and then the dealer doesn't answer his phone on a Saturday. Hello? <laughs> Not happening. Hello? You, hello? <laughs> What's your second choice though? Oh, the second choice. Well, okay, so, you know, on Car and Classic, you, you've, you've, there's a wide range of cars. Everything. Um, like literally everything from classics to fairly modern stuff. Pre-war, post-war, all of, you know, you know, all of the things. But what I didn't expect to find, I have to say, is uh, a 1972 Chevron B20. And we catered to all tastes. You at seriously do, because when this came up, I was. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I am a massive sucker for a Formula Atlantic car. And this was it one of them? Open the window up and you've got to close it straight away. Yeah, I was like, okay. Oh. Take oh. a deep breath, come back to it. And then, oh, Dare cushion. What a thing. <laughs> um, yes, anybody that knows me knows I, t I do have a massive thing for 70s Atlantic or F2 cars because they look like a. Formula, like a Formula car should. Big, fat tyres, um, a little bit of aero. And Chevron, Derek Bennett was an absolute visionary. His cars are beautiful. And he made cars for all sorts of different formulae. There was sports cars, there was Formula cars. There was, he was working on a Formula One car when mm. he was killed in 1978 in a hang glide. Am I right in thinking Chevron had hands in other cars and projects as well? Or I think it? no, at the time, I think that was just his thing. Right. Um, uh, I'm not particularly well up post, on this area. Of, post of his vehicles. death, I think they, they, they might have done. Right. But, but the, the Bennett cars, I mean, they're, they're beautiful and they're well sought after. Mm. Uh, and this thing, I think it's got a Cosworth FVC, the 1800 in it. So that would rev to 11 T um, and have about 250. 35 horsepower, weigh less than a packet of crisps, <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and it would just handle beautifully. Um, but it's the provenance on it, this thing, uh, it's been driven by Peter Geth in Vic Elford. Um, it, it, oh, and it can still be used in anger. It absolutely well, can. Yeah. You can um, and, I mean, I was lucky enough to race in the Silverstone Classic earlier this year, and, and, and there was all sorts. This stuff is, is I mean, classic racing at the moment is huge, and I think that would make, oh, I'd really love and that. I love car. that classic, I love that they get like a good order and what have you, they, they get out there and they properly rub door handles. They'll, they'll, oh, there's they'll, no messing about it. They will trade a bit of paint. Oh, too right, absolutely, you know, and even the single seaters do. They, these cars are, you know, they're, they're worth more than a three bed detached in Stafford. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're like, <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, yeah, well, once, once you pull the, the, the helmet on, the visor goes down, you, you know. 
doesn't it's, matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> you know as well as I do. We're, we're in a race. That's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, so what's your second one, Chris? What's, uh, what do you got? Just to make people think I'm a one-trick pony, my second one is also a Ford. Yeah, well. Um, it's not that I'm a Ford guy, it's just this. I, but you I'm, started at Classic Ford, you wrote for Ford magazine, Ford magazine and you've I've chosen had, two Fords so far. Yeah, I've had five Caprices, Zodiac, Escorts, stuff. Yeah, I mean, you're not convincing me. I've had six Bondeos. Really? <laughs> it's not something to be proud of. <laughs> so you're not a Ford bloke? No. Um, so what's your second choice? Uh, Ford. Oh, um, okay, yeah. Right. But I've picked this because when, when I saw this on the site, I wrote, we, we write a thing every Sunday. Um, called Auction Card a Week, where we sort of cherry pick something that we've we've seen that's interested interested us. And this one, I had to read the information about the car twice because I couldn't believe what I was reading. It's a '67 Mustang Fastback, so the best one. Mm -hmm. um, mm, I like a notchback, but all right. Okay, notchback really. Mm -hmm. Fastback, bullet gone in 60 seconds. Yeah, but oh, I'll I'll. I'll I'll also roll that out to the 69 Mach 1 Fastback because that's a great looking car. Mm. Um, if you've ever seen um, sort of Roadkill and David Freiberger yeah. on, on YouTube, he's yeah. got the Disgustang, which they pulled out of a junkyard, they which did, is a very did. nice car now. But yeah, this 67 is remarkable, not because it's a 67 Fastback, but because it's got less than 7,000 miles on it and it's genuine mm -hmm. and all the paperwork is there mm. to back it up and it's in the UK. Mm. Basically, a chap in California bought it new he drove it until it was the early 70s 73 74 maybe and then for his personal reasons his license was revoked but he couldn't bring himself to get rid of the car so Don't it sat on the driveway baking in the california sun for 34 years and then it was bought by an expat over there and he put it on the back on the road he's had the car respray because obviously the california sun had yeah. re wreaked havoc on the paintwork but it would appear blessing the old boy who had the car covered up the glass because the interior is all original as well and yeah it's been repainted the guy the expat guy used it in LA as his daily driver um, putting a few more miles on it but obviously not a lot um, and then the car was brought to the UK and when we sold it that's a fresh car in the UK it's not done the American car circuit it's not done the show circuit mm. less than 7,000 miles it's that iconic shape that people go to unless they're Slightly off kilter like yourself, a notch back really over a fastback. What's wrong with you, man? Well, you know, you've got two rovers. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> You're in this round running. Uh, but yeah, the, the, just the mileage along. There's, it's, it's had some. It's had some modifications. Nothing, nothing egregious. It's got. A, no, it's gorgeous. It's, it's got a tin a spoiler. Fabulous thing. Yeah, the, I know. The tin spoiler makes it look like a Mustang Two Cobra mm -hmm. Jet. Which. What would you do with that? What a Mustang Two Cobra Jet or the spoiler? The spoiler. I'd, I would take it off delicately, and just pop it in the bin, because mm -hmm. it doesn't... It, you don't break it over your knee first. So it can never harm anyone yes. ever again. Yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe burn it. I think it. that's wise. Or maybe break it in half and put it in two bins, <laughs> two just, just to be bins. really sure. <laughs> but again, it's, it's subjective, it's personal preference, it doesn't do anything for me, but it obviously did something for, for the yeah. buyer, because it sold for over £50,000. I, mean, I can see why, it's a fabulous thing. It's, and it's unrepeatable. It's, it's gorgeous. I mean, 7,000 miles, it's been completely gone through as well, so it's not as if it's yeah. going, you know, it's, it's, it's not perished. There's not, you know, the, the hoses aren't going to be screwed up. And yeah, it's, it's not, not just had a blowover, it's had no. the engine, it's all, you know, as the Americans love to say, it's all numbers matching. Um, but it's, it's all, it's had whole, all new seals. It's Did you do that again, serviced. what was that? What's that? Numbers matching. Numbers matching. Yeah. You've got. Have you ever watched an American reality TV car <laughs> oh, show? God, that's what we did. It's got to be numbers matching, or we'll lose the shop. <laughs> we had a. We bought a, um, Nick and I bought a 1978 Pontiac Catalina. That's like a car, but a bit bigger. <laughs> it's it's like driving a house. Yeah. We bought it for a quid. I can't. I think it was up just north of Shrewsbury. Something. We bought a, bought it for a pound. It was stood underneath a willow tree for god knows how long and we drove it back and i don't know what happened just leaving it. a cloud of tree think, behind you yeah oh, uh, it was just a horrible horrible thing that's the sort of car that you can have a crash in and you've got time to write a will and phone your insurer while oh, it's still yeah, happening easily <laughs> no problem at all because the crash i'm really yet. sorry but i'm having an accident at the moment <laughs> i may be late home i like those big old pontiacs though this that's all that tire sort of <laughs> yeah Chasing on gravel. From, from, on gravel <laughs> from like the A Team or Night Rider or something. Yeah. I love that stuff. Horrible, horrible thing. But that's the Mustang is not a horrible, horrible thing. No. But, the, but the, the only American car that I've ever had much any particular contact with 
cost a pound. Uh, it cost us 50 quid in fuel to get back. And that was back in 1994 or whenever it was. But um, yeah, horrible thing. You didn't lose the shop, though? We didn't lose the shop, no. Excellent. No. So is your next car a uh, Pontiac Catalina? It is not a Pontiac Damn Catalina. It. It's something that, that, that people, again, people who know me might be surprised by this one because I've never been a Porsche fan. Now, I know lots of people... I don't remember seeing a Porsche. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. So I've never been a Porsche fan uh, until a friend of ours, uh, Jim Cameron, mm. from Mission Motorsport. Yeah. And he has two 911s. Yes, he does, yeah. Uh, he has a white one and a yellow one. And he allowed me to drive the white one back from the pub. The one with the mural on the bonnet. The one with the mural on the bonnet, yeah. And I got it. Even in that short trip back to his house... It just made sense. It was like... You have to be involved mm. um, with a 911. And this 80s 911, 1988 911 Carrera, 3.2 Sport Targa, mm. with the whale tail, it says 80s. It couldn't yeah. say any more 80s if there was the 18 truck parked behind it. <laughs> um, it was, it was, it, it's, a, it's a really lovely thing. And, and I've, an air cooled, mm. it's got to be air cooled. I'm, I'm not a massive fan of the late, of, of the, of the post war cooled stuff. 80s whale tail 911. Mm. Yes, please. It's got the foosh wheels, the colour coded foosh wheels. It's got the whale tail spoiler, the target top. It's got fantastic history. I don't think it's particularly bad value. It, but well, this is the thing we're talking about what we've, what we've seen that's, that's sold. It's yeah, not, so it's almost. This isn't, this isn't about it, the value. But no, it isn't about the value. But at the same time, I don't think it. Looking at 911 prices and looking at classic car prices, it didn't strike me as, oh, that's way too much money. No, some it's of a the, properly lovely thing. Some of the 70s and 80s and 911s can go for. Oh, crazy money. Ludicrous money. Ludicrous money. But as a newly recruited pre-996 or pre-997 Porsche, I wouldn't say fan, but uh, mm. I can certainly appreciate them. That but I like that, that my, era. To me, yeah. is, I, think, I think growing up in the 80s, I think pop culture has something to do with it because it was in every sort of mm. Hollywood, yeah. L.A., yeah. It's that kind of car. It says Beverly Hills Cop. It says it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Do you know what it? I mean? It's, it's got all that. It's going for it, isn't it? I think. I think pop culture in general can have a, a massive impact on what cars you're into. It's, you know, the cars become characters. They might not know by name when you tell them what a 1980 Chevy Caprice is. Yeah. But you show them. And that's yeah. And that's every police car Absolutely. from every, every yeah, yeah. American action film ever. And the 500 of them that got destroyed in, in the Blues Brothers. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, yeah. People know it's, and and with the Porsche, I think they they're so prolific in pop culture you, you, you see them and I, I think that's what helps keep them popular because yeah who doesn't want a bit of Hollywood in their lives oh I, I, I certainly don't much to the uh, <laughs> much, much to the chagrin of my missus I always say I always say like the guy at the start of uh, Pretty Woman love that film um, no really um, there's, there's really? a guy crossing the street and he's like Hollywood what's your dream and I just think of him every time I think yeah. of Hollywood yes and now I'm going to think of him every time I see a 911 so, yeah, a red 911 with uh, beautiful foosh wheels yes so I've ruined that for myself um, so that was my third choice something that, that as I say people might not expect me to, to, to choose but, uh, but yeah an, another lovely car so I'm expecting another Ford Chris yes I have picked another Ford for my third car <laughs> It's uh, an Italian one. Italian Ford. Italian Ford. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a Ford Alfa Romeo 2000 uh, Spider. It's, and it's hanging. It's absolutely hanging. It is hanging, isn't it? It's not, it's not, it's not a well thing. No. But there's, there, are, there are two reasons why I've, why I've chosen this. One is because what I love is... Now, my, my history of car and classic goes back. I've been here nearly four years now. And when we first started doing auctions, I'd go out and photograph a lot of the auction cars and so on. But as we've grown and we, we, we go through hundreds, if not thousands of cars a month on the auction platform, we now have this massive network of, of freelance guys and girls going out, taking the photos for mm -hmm. us. And sometimes these cars come back like this Alfa Romeo. And I love the effort that has been gone to, to shoot this car just <laughs> beautifully despite the fact it's been in a barn for 1987 and it's got a hole you could probably get a Bedlington Terrier through um, in, the, in the bottom of the A-pillar. It's poorly. It's in a bad, bad way. Is it a genuine barn find though or is it just one of these ones where, you know, they throw some dust and leaves over them and call that, it a barn That find. right there is point two. It is a genuine barn find, is which, is, which is why I love it. I hate... I hate... Have I pushed it? Have I... Yeah, I, I hate, I hate this whole barn button. find culture. I hate that people Shocking, think isn't it? if they haven't washed their car for three weeks, mm -hmm. it suddenly makes their 2006 Mondeo titanium mm -hmm. worth £44,000. That's mm -hmm. not how it works. You know, if, if there were enough barns 
to support the barn finds that are listed for sale on, on various online sites, there would be no houses in the, in the United Kingdom. No, there are not. It would, it would just be barns. We, we'd, we'd have to live in our cars. There can't be many genuine, actual barn finds from a barn left. No, no it's, it, people are trading on the romance of it because th this is why like, urban exp exploration and what have you is a thing. People like finding the abandoned and the forgotten mm. and the untouched and it's exciting and mm. they want to unearth it. A barn find is a glorious thing when it happens, mm. but you can't force that. No. And I would also argue that if you find a barn find and take it home and then sell it as a barn find, it's not a barn find anymore. No, you find it on your drive. Yeah, the first person, the person that buys that isn't finding it in a barn. No. They're finding it, as you say, on their driveway. Yeah. But that's why I like the Alpha. It's, it... Yeah, but I mean, mate, it is, it's, it's, it's hanging. It's, it's kippered. It's not. It's, it's kippered, but it's got, it's got that. It's got a twink in it. It's um, got a and, twink in it. So that's, that's a plus. Always. And there's something, you know, some people might look at a car that's not moved since 1987 and go, whoa, Nelly, I'm not touching that. Mm. But, and I would think you might agree with me on this, there is a beauty to that in that you're not unpicking someone else's work. Yep. I would rather yep. have the untouched, slightly knackered car yeah. than the restored but I've got no evidence car. Yes, very much. I'd, yes. I don't want to pick through someone else's bodges. No, but on the, at the same time, I don't think I'd want to take that on. No. But I mean, you know, it, it's an alpha, so that's, you know, it's been in the barn for 32 years, in a dry store in the barn, it's yeah. already, and it's rusted through. What does that tell you? Alpha and male, though. They made them out of paper, metal so thin you could read through it. But uh, yeah, I love, I love the Alpha and... No, you're, you're right. The, the, the listing's great. I mean, it's, it, it, it's... It's a Series 2, it's, so it's, it's not quite gone... It's not the beauty of the boat tail. No. But it's not quite the hideousness of the Series 3. I, it's sold, which means somebody Nearly likes it enough to... Yeah hopefully restore it. I, I, you know, I wish them luck. Yeah, more power too. Absolutely. Well, uh, my, my fourth one is sort of, there's a theme. It, it sort of matches your, yours, because this is also a Lancia. Right, so we're, stay, we're, staying, in we're, the, staying, we're staying in the boot. Oh, we're staying in the boot, we're staying over the Mediterranean. Uh, for um, what, I mean, it's, it's, it's the iconic Group A. Oh, it's a 2005 Lancia Thesis Saloon. It is not, it's a 1992 Lancia Delta HF Integral Evolution. Well, if it's not a thesis, I'm not interested. Who cares about, who cares about a Delta? It's, it's an Integrowler. <laughs> and, uh, and who doesn't have an Integrowler? Nobody I want to know. Just I mean, they are fabulous, fabulous, fabulous machines. things. And, and this is a, this is a, oh, it's beautiful. The Evolution, I, I get misty-eyed about this thing. So 92, <laughs> full Group A spec, you know, right in the height of when I was watching rallying and it was available on Grandstand. Uh, the Repsol colours, I've always, always, always hankered after an Integrowler. Always. It's, it's the one car. I've, I mean, I know it's, it's ruinous. It's the poster child. I know it? it will break down. I know the electrical fallout of it. But I've driven, I've driven a, just a normal um, HF Integrale, not, not an Evo or anything, um, left hooker, mm -hmm. and that had just been restored, and it was all dialed in. And when, when they are on song, even that one, which isn't the full mm -hmm. sort of rip-snorting yeah, yeah, yeah. rally car, that was just... just... I, Oh. Yeah, I know. See, this is the thing. You get I mean, yeah. it is that. Uh, and it, people don't get Italian cars until they drive one. It's every angle that, that looks right. It yeah. looks angry. It looks like it's going to rip your face off. It's, yeah, it's it, brutal. It is brutal. It's, it's, it's angles and, yeah. and it's it's a shape that Lancia could fit what it needed into. Yeah. Well, I mean, this this has got the. I mean, I made a note here. Look, the uh, the driver's electric window is slow. I mean, that's that that came from the factory like that. Yeah. Um, that's what that's what they did. They just didn't send enough electricity <laughs> exactly, to that side. Exactly. That's the problem with them. This was a Cat D write-off, um, right. but you know that's why it's pretty good value for, because the integrales are going ridiculous. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that that car or that type of car, the integrale was really, it, and it's one of my absolute passions. They were identifiable. They were. They were cars. absolutely. But I mean, today's cars are. Phenomenal. The, the, Incredible. The, the, the WRC cars are outrageous. I will backhand anyone who says, oh, it's not as good as Group B. Yeah. Group B was murderous. Yes. And current WRC cars are faster. Oh, significantly. Faster, safer. Yeah, but who doesn't uh, want an Audi Quattro? Don't, well, everyone you know, wants an Audi Quattro. You know. But I, I'd also like to go home to my missus and my kids at the end of the day. Yeah, do right. But yes, love the Integrale. That's, 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 that's my bag baby. That's, that's your bag baby. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we, I've done four. What's your fourth? I am staying four. true to my 
to my stereotypical tastes. Go on. Not within this video, Go within on. a broader sense. Now, if you follow me on social media, you'll know that I love a saloon. I think the saloon is the perfect body type. Wagon. It's a saloon. It's wagons. Wagons too. I mean, I've got I've got the C Max as my as my daily sort of sensible dad car, and yes, that is hugely practical. Mm -hmm. And I've had estates, and they are hugely practical. Mm -hmm. But I don't often need to move a fridge. Yeah, but when you do, nothing nothing does it better than a wagon. If, if and I the need... wagon is almost always better looking than the saloon. Almost always. No, no, I like a saloon. <sighs> you couldn't be more wrong. You could try. But you couldn't. I, no, it's, it's, it's like going back to the Vitess again. People are like, oh, well, I prefer the fastback. So well, go and buy a fastback. I like my saloon. Yeah. I don't like the fastback. I've, even though I've got a fastback, I don't like it. But you liked the Ford fastback. The what? The Mustang. Yeah, but that's a, that's a coupe. That's a two-door. That's, ah. that's fine. Oh, okay. But if, it, if it's got, if so it's got raw doors, it's got <laughs> so to be a saloon. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so four-door, you do like a four-door saloon? I do like a four-door saloon. And I like the wagon. And, and this is a car that I've had two of, um, with no success on either one, but I still love them. Go on. They keep trying to break my heart, but I will, I will not give up on them. And that is because it is peak BMW. It is the best big saloon they ever made. It all went downhill from there. It's an E38. That is BMW a perfection. It's <laughs> Everybody knows <laughs> that you like an E38. In fact, you like an E38 that much that when you sent the list through to me, there were two. There were two, yeah. <laughs> Out yeah. of five cars, you've chosen two. And, and it was E38s. the same one twice. Exactly. Um, it might only seem like one choice, but it was such a good choice, you thought it deserved I, mentioning I just, twice. I just think it's such a good looking car. I think it's, it's perfectly balanced. It's, the dimensions are spot on. Mm -hmm. The build quality is excellent. It's not that awful, looks like it was a car made out of Play-Doh that fell down the stairs, E65, that came after it. The E38 is just perfection. It is an elegant car. It's, it's beautiful. And this one was, this one only had 88,000 miles on it, so mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't hammered, um, low owners, mint condition. It V8. Wasn't, V8. It wasn't the most elaborate spec. It didn't have like, it wasn't a sport. It didn't have any parallels. It had, you know, little 15 or 16 inch wheels on it. A, a real sort of basic one, if, if there can be such a thing in, in luxury car terms, but it's just lovely. No trim hanging off it. No. Just, and that's, that's the sort of one I would like to, well, I'd like a 2001 E38 Sport on M Parallels with the wide infotainment because that's what they used in the BMW films. I don't know if you ever saw them. I I, maybe once or twice yeah. around around the 2000s yeah. and and I would encourage you to look for these on YouTube around the, around the 2000s BMW went to various big film directors like uh, what's Ridley Scott's brother Bob uh, Bob Bob Scott um, him um, he, he did he did a lot of Denzel films and like big Hollywood directors and they all had Clive Owen in the British actor that's right the, the James Bond oh, we right. never got yeah the, the James Bond we deserved but we never got do you think yeah He'd have been a good band. More than like Brosnan? Would you would you've swapped him for Brosnan? I would have swapped him for Brosnan. Yeah. 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 Brosnan was too. <laughs> you don't like Brosnan? No, he's a bit. Who's sticky. your favourite Bond then? My favourite Bond's Dalton. Timothy Dalton, yeah. the Living Daylights. Yeah, always has been. Oh right, okay. Because Dalton was dark. Yeah, he was a bit dark. Yeah. He, he had he had a bit of he, he had a bit of swag, but yeah. he was he was a dark, brooding, damaged man, and that's <laughs> that's who Bond should be. <laughs> We could bring that back round to being on topic. Being entirely E38. sure where that went. But <laughs> and, uh, well, E38. Wasn't there an E38 in one of the, Wasn't there a Bond film with an E38 in it? Tomorrow Never Brosnan's. Something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. Terry Hatcher Never my Dies. My boss, when I lived in the States, my boss, Bob Zecker. That's such an American. Isn't it just? Yeah. Hi, Bob Zecker. Bob Zecker. What a, a top like Love Bob. Doesn't um, work if he's from Cornwall. All right, Bob Zecker. <laughs> doesn't it's got to be American. Bob Zecker. Oh. Yeah, Bob's a lovely bloke. And he had, when I went, when we were, he had a 740 IL E38. Yeah. Um, and in silver with uh, cream A couple leather. of extra inches in the back, sir. Well, you know, <laughs> it just certainly doesn't hurt, does it? That was a, that was a lovely car. I, I enjoyed that. And, and he also had a 308 GTS, which he let me drive once. I, I went to pick up my girlfriend in it. That was pretty cool. Did time. you did you feel the need to get a moustache? I did. I didn't. And no, a Hawaiian shirt. No, no, no. I think I had a goatee in those days. I take this. I oh, know it's not a seven that's series. the E21. E21. And if you're watching and you've been looking at the cars behind us, this E21 is interesting because this one, this is owned by Sam, whose workshop this is that we're using as a 
audiovisual backdrop. Um, but this car is the one that was rebuilt on Salvage Hunters Classic Cars by Paul Cowland and Drew mm -hmm. Pritchard. This was, this was a sort of amber bronze colour um, and they had it resprayed in black. Um, I think they restrained themselves before they went, I think Paul wanted to go full Alpina on it. That sounds like Paul. Yeah. Um, but they restrained themselves and it's just got the wheels. I'm glad they did because it is gorgeous. Yeah, I think they did put a stripe on it, which I think Sam's taken off. No, there's a stripe on it. Oh, there is a stripe. Yeah, I can't yeah, really yeah. see from it's here. Pinstripe, two stripes. Oh, it's painted on. But all the interiors have been redone, the engines have been rebuilt. Oh, it's, and it's a lovely thing. Oh, this is fab. Yeah. This is fabber. Yeah, it's, it's not a BMW, but it's, it's monstrous. It is monstrous. It's the 300 horse. 300 horse, TT. TT, quattro powered. BMW pickup. It's amazing. Caddy, yeah. yeah, it's a fabulous thing. I love it. I love it. You know it's a serious car if it's got aero catches. Well, if it's got aero catches, it, it, that just says motorsport, doesn't yeah. it? 1.8 litre turbocharged, 300 horse, four wheel drive, pickup. Yeah, it's and a it's little all... Lively. There's no weight on the back. It's a little bit lively, apparently. I can't, I'm really trying to persuade But you said it's all serviceable, standard Audi stuff. It's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. So it's modified for a caddy, but it's not so modified that you can't use it and maintain it and look after it. And absolutely, it. yeah, too right. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as you well know, that's right up my Strata. So I'm going to try and persuade him to let me drive it once. You could, you, you would do terrible, terrible naughty things both in and to own that. I would, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call you, call your number, buddy. <laughs> it's like, you know me too well. <laughs> so that was my fourth. So we're on our final car. Our final now. car, right. Well, um, you talked about Hollywood earlier on. Yes. And Hollywood, I, what's Hollywood. your dream? <laughs> I don't think, I mean, there's a, this says Hollywood to me. It's 1968 Mercedes-Benz 280SL Pagoda. It is the height of elegance. It is yes. a beautiful piece of art as far as I'm concerned. Pagoda because of the roof shape, it was nicknamed. It is, it's jaw-droppingly beautiful. I think you could daily it. It's a Mercedes. Yeah. The build quality is outrageous. What engine's in the one you've chosen? Sorry, 2.8. Uh, this is the 2.8, uh, the M130 engine. Yeah, straight six. Straight six, 2.8. Is that the one, is that the carbs one? It will be at that age, won't it? Two, oh, no, this was injection. So two is this the 15 horse, I think? Bosch mechanical injection? Almost certainly. I can't yeah. remember off the top of it. But, uh, four speed manual. Yeah. I mean, just a lovely, lovely thing. So that's, that's actual UK car, right hand drive, proper thing. That's probably would, would you say that that era SL is, is, is Baroque's biggest hit? I, I, I don't think there's a better one. I don't think they got, they, they, they got worse from then on. There's a finesse to it, there's an elegance to it that, that doesn't appear really on the later ones. Mm. They, they got bigger and, and, and heavier and they look heavy. This thing looks light on its feet. It's, oh, it's gorgeous, mate. It's just gorgeous. It is, it is. It's a bit stack light, you can't go wrong with that. No, but, but um, they, they, this, this was the most expensive one that I chose. They're, they're hugely popular in car and classic. They always have since we since we started doing auctions. Some of the first cars we had were SL Pagodas, and we were, uh, as a business, we were quite rightly thinking: should we maybe try and spread these out a bit? It's, mm. it's quite a lot. they sell. I can't, I, I can't see why they wouldn't. I mean, yeah, if, if, you they want, are if you want to sell an SL, there is always someone who will buy it. Yeah, and that goes for the R. Was it one hundred seven? Yeah, the R, even the R one two nine as well. After not a fan. I'm not. I like the album. See, I'm, I'm not. My friend Ben, who does a lot, who, who works for us, and, and, and he does a lot of our videos. He he had an SL, and we ripped the living piss out of him for like forever. And then, thankfully, somebody parked it in the uh, in the front of it, uh, and he got rid of it and bought a Jag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so he's in your no, club now. So he's in my club now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but no, I, I don't like the later ones. But that to me. It says elegance, it says, I mean, you could just jump in it and go and you'd look, you could turn up anywhere, yeah. anywhere, and it would, it would look right. Yeah, it's, it's, despite being so classy as well, there's, there's, a, there's an approachable sort of classness about it. I agree, I totally agree. There's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no arrogance to that. No. There's, there's no pomp, it's just a beautiful thing. Correct. Mm. And what I love about old Mercedes as well, any old Mercedes, you go up to it, you open the door and you go, clunk. Clunk. And it, it right. shuts like a, it, it would make a new Bentley blush. It would, wouldn't it? It's, it's just yeah. a reassuring There's solidness. That, yeah, totally, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a shame that everything sort of post-2000 was crap. But, um, before, but the, before that, the, the W124s and, mm. and all the, the, the there was, there was a, a very, they were, they were, oh, they were the height of, of robustness. Yeah. But these had an elegance about them 
that belied that to a certain extent. But you could just jump in it and go, and you know damn well it's going to start. You know, you know, you can go anywhere with it. It's not going to let you down. And you look like a million dollars doing it. Absolutely. You know, so that's that was my fifth and final choice this time. That's that's a, a pretty good choice. Yeah. So I'm somewhat concerned about your fifth. Don't be. For my fifth, I've gone. Uh, I've gone patriotic. <laughs> Have you? Fully patriotic. Um, this isn't to, to toot my own horn as in terms of my role or, or job here, but this is a car that I shot um, and, and wrote for auctions because it's someone who sold cars with us previously and I, I, I'm friends with him anyway, so I offered to do it. Yeah. Um, plus he had some over 800 parts, so it made <laughs> winning, sense to go and do it myself. Winning. <laughs> Save the shipping. Um, but it was uh, a Jaguar XJ40 G-Reg. Mm. G -Reg. Um, and it only had 25,000 miles on it. But what appealed to me about it is it was the perfect example of how to keep a low mileage car but not let it go brittle and dry. It's a difficult path to tread that. It is. So you've got that, you've got that 827 that I've got, mm -hmm. the, the green one. That's a nightmare. It's only got 19,000 miles on it, mm -hmm. but it's a nightmare because it has done nothing yep. for 23 years. Cars don't like doing nothing. No. Cars, they're machines, as we said earlier. They, they need to circulate and yep. function. They're, they're like humans. They, they need to pump and, and work. And that's what this Jag's done. It's 25,000 miles, but you go through the service history of it, MOT'd every year. It was serviced every year. At one point in the service book, it had done like 200 miles and it had right. an oil and filter. Yep. It had been kept used, kept in the garage, not taken out in the rain, yeah. not driven in winter, but, but kept healthy and happy. And that is what made it so special. And that's why it sold for ten and a half thousand pounds. For an this, old Jag. For an old Jag. But everything worked. It's the epitome of the Jag. Yeah. It's got the badges on the grill. Yeah. It's got, you know, it, it says Jag, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, it really, and you, I mean, you, know, you can waft up and down the motorway in that thing. And it's such, you know, straight six. One of my Silky like, smooth straight six. Straight six, as, as you may have seen me, Shouting about on Twitter the other day, straight six is my favourite engine. Is it? Because it's smooth and balanced and lovely and yeah. not that complicated. I, I like that engine. Mm -hmm. And in that Jag, it's just, it's like, you know, he started it up and you couldn't even hear it. No. It's just, just lovely. And it, it's also a brilliant demonstration that the XJ40 is finding its time now. It's, I think it's taken it an unfair amount of time to get there, to be properly regarded as a classic. I think it, it was, is a classic. I don't was, think there's any argument there. It, it was it is. Very, yeah, but for a long time it was very landlord of a pub with a flat roof. Yes, yes, I go, I, I can see that. But uh, but uh, uh, you're right. It has found its time. It was a very Charlie FM sticker in the back window. I could, you couldn't. I don't think you could daily this one. But I think you could. You. It, it would be a lovely weekend car. Yeah, and it's a show car. It's, yeah. you, you could happily show it. He only sold it because because <laughs> he hadn't had it that long, and it was better than he thought it would be and he couldn't use it as he wanted to use it i mean it's going to break down but it's 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 going to i mean yeah it's but it, it'll 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 be going to over here it'll be comfortable doing it all the electrics um, will fall out it, yeah but it doesn't it, it, it almost doesn't matter with it and you know my no, mind's doing the same thing but it's never it's, it's had it's had a little bit of paint and it's had a little bit of not even repair, I think it's just had a bit of stuff addressed underneath because British car. But if you're the buyer and you can see and you see all that yeah. it's like well you know there are no questions. No. <laughs> yeah. And everything's here's the in, money in the history, and it's uh, if you, that's what you want, you, you're never going to find one that, as good that as good as that again yeah. that you can use. No, that's 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 the perfect case of mint show worthy, but not a museum piece. Yeah, you you can take that out. I mean, if you took it out in the rain or the snow, you're an animal. It's a, it's an the A38 saloon V8 waftmobile. Mm. XJ40, straight six, waftmobile. Mm. What else did you have one? Oh yeah, a screwed Alpha that was falling to pieces. Yeah. V8, another V8. Yeah. Ford, small block, fastback, and a Ford Pop. Yeah. I think you've covered all the bases there, haven't you? That'd be ha I'd be happy with that as a fast. That's a fairly, fairly good garage, that, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd let the Alpha go, because I'm an idiot. So I wouldn't be able to restore Swap that. Swap fat into something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I have, I have all the... Uh, Give it to Alphaholics the... and £400,000. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. do it. I have, I have all the technical prowess of a goose. So <laughs> it, would, it would just end up cleaner, <laughs> but still <laughs> with big holes in it. Oh, bless. 
Uh, but that's no, I think that's a nice list, mate. I think you've got a nice yeah. list there. And yours, you've got rally cars, you've got elegant convertibles, mm. you've got a <gasps> Porsche. I know, I know. <gasps> Shock, horror, I know. And what was your what was your first one? Your first one was the um, little Opel, wasn't oh, it? Oh, the Opel, yeah, and the, and the race car and the, and the F2 car. So you've gone, you've, you've, you've spanned. Well, that's the beauty about about seventy years. Of yeah, that. well, that's the beauty about these uh, about <laughs> window shopping on the website. It's just like, you know, fantasy, well, I want that one, that one, that one. I mean, yeah. It doesn't get any better than that. And those, and, and it must have been a horrible email to get from me to say, just pick five just cars pick five you would have bought. Oh, man. We'll yeah, but it's not them. easy because there's tons. I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't as if you've only got like 15 to choose from. No. There's, there's dozens there's and lot. dozens and dozens. And, you know, to whittle it down to five, I could, you know, I could have done 10, 12 easy, no problem. Well, and been happy. You'll have to hold your horses and just pick five for the next video. Well, I hope it's the next one. I've, I've really enjoyed this one. Yeah, if you watch this, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. Go and have a look at Car and Classic Auctions. Go and look at the results. Go and look at the cars for sale. Buy one. Send us links of things you'd like to hear us talking about or lamenting or lusting over because they're four-door saloons with V8s or straight sixes. <laughs> Um, just, just let us know. But if you'd like to see more of this, let us know in the comments and we will make this a regular feature. Um, hope you've enjoyed. Go and, go and engage with the website. Um, I've been me, you've been, been you. Me. And uh, we will see you in the next one.